welcome. Today is the seventh Sunday after Easter, also known as the Sunday after Ascension Day. Uh, last Thursday was Ascension Day, and that comes 40 days after Easter. And since then, we've been hearing stories of Jesus' appearance to the disciples after the resurrection. He's now preparing to leave them, and he promises not to leave them on their own. He's going to send them the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we'll celebrate that next Sunday at Pentecost. Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Heavenly God, today we celebrate the glorifying of your Son, Jesus. He followed your calling, proclaimed your love, spoke to poor and rich, oppressed and powerful, weak and strong. He completed his task, obeyed you to the end, and passed the work on. Thank you, Heavenly God, for his example to us his challenge to us, and his inspiration to us. Help us to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to take the cause of your kingdom into all the world. Amen. The Collect of the Day. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine is yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. I must confess that I'd never heard of Zoom before the current crisis began. Two months later, lots of square boxes on a screen, framing the faces of individuals sitting in their own homes, but have come together via it or similar platforms, will be, I think, forever associated with this pandemic. I've even participated in a few, if not entirely successful, meetings using Zoom myself. It has enabled me to see and speak to colleagues who would normally gather at regular intervals in the living room of one of our number over a cup of coffee. It has been good to catch up, share news and views, swap experiences, discuss possible way forward, exchange a bit of banter, see the new hairstyles. It makes us feel we are still connected, even though we are kept apart because of the need to maintain social distancing. Human beings need to come together. For the most part, we are social creatures, and the fact that families and friends have not been able to gather, even for weddings, funerals, birthdays, confirmations, anniversaries, graduations, school end-of-year ceremonies, has been one of the hardest things for many people to come to terms with. How often have you seen at the end of a message of congratulations in the newspaper or online lately, words such as, 
We'll all get together to celebrate properly when all this is over. Yesterday, here in St. Paul's, we should have had our annual summer fair. But like so many other events, it was cancelled some time ago. Whilst it may be a necessary fundraiser, much more importantly, it's a community event. It gives people from the surrounding area and beyond the opportunity to come together in a village-like setting that is created in our church building, parish centre and grounds. People of all ages meet and greet, they linger and browse, chat with friends old and new, maybe even go away with a bargain or two. No matter how sophisticated Zoom may become, it will never replace that. Even though restrictions have been eased a little in the past week, our church buildings and parish centres remain closed. Services have been cancelled. Churches are not buildings, they are communities that exist to draw people together. But for the time being, we must physically stay apart. What then does Jesus' prayer for us all to be one mean here for us in our time? How can we be one when we must settle for online services, phone calls and Zoom meetings rather than face-to-face -face gatherings, handshakes, hugs and the sacraments that we are accustomed to? The world and the church has been here before and I think we tend to forget that. As early as the second century AD, the plague of Galen, caused possibly either by measles or smallpox, killed around five million people. The bubonic plague in the 14th century killed an estimated 70 to 100 million people in Eurasia, reducing the world's population by around 20%. The Spanish flu pandemic in 1918 may have taken the lives of as many as 50 million people. And there have been many, many more. Throughout human history, plagues have occasionally ripped through the population, forcing separations and leaving sickness and death in their wake. In turbulent times, I think it's helpful to remember that we're not the first generation to experience the panic fear and upheaval caused by disease. In the 21st century, there's been a vast improvement in the understanding of disease and in medicine. And maybe that has made us complacent, lulled most of us into thinking that pandemics had been relegated to history and that somehow we were immune to such things. We now know only too well that they have not gone away and we struggle to respond to this latest one. As a result of this pandemic, we've had to be innovative as we explore ways in which we can remain united, even though we must separate. For the most part, technology has been vital in helping to achieve this. But I really loved the story recently about the man who modified a see-through shower curtain so that he could safely hug his granny. That hug was obviously so important to them both, providing a much needed sense of security and reassurance amidst so much uncertainty and fear. In our gospel passage this morning, Jesus is preparing to die. He has spent a long time talking to the disciples, attempting to prepare them. The night before he would lay down his life for his friends, he shared dinner with them and laid aside his robe like a servant. And as he prays for them, he's preparing both himself and his disciples for his death. As we read this gospel passage in the light of the Ascension, we realize that Jesus is also providing reassurance at a time of uncertainty and fear, preparing a way for his disciples to remain united with him and with each other, even though he is not physically present. Soon, as a result of being empowered by the Holy Spirit, they will remain connected, even though separated. And this will also be the means by which they can continue his work in the world. The Ascension story is about the abiding presence of Jesus in the experience and conviction and lives of his followers. Like the Easter stories, the Ascension affirms that Jesus is not simply a figure of the past, but is present today as well. And like Easter, the Ascension affirms that Jesus is Lord. 
If we strive to follow the teachings of Jesus, he really becomes alive for us today in our time. He is truly with us. His teaching and example shape our attitudes and the way we live our lives and how we behave towards others. In declaring him to be Lord, we challenge the injustices, oppression and violence too prevalent in our world today. In our gospel this morning, Jesus prays us into a new vision. It's a vision of a worldwide, interconnected, interdependent community, loved unconditionally by God, rooted in the love of God, and created for God's glory. God's love must manifest itself in our love for our neighbour, both near and far, those whom we know and those whom we will never know. Throughout the present crisis, we should be constantly looking at ways in which we can love others, even at a cost to ourselves. Avoiding any selfish temptation to hoard basic necessities, for example, that may leave others without, or to ignore the advice or break the rules designed to curb this virus, which could well put others in danger. Jesus, the ascended Lord, prays that those who follow him may be energised by his love to become a community of wholeness and hopefulness that can also help bring wholeness and hope to the world. and pray for rest. We lay aside our distractedness and pray for peace. We lay aside our dissatisfaction and pray for gratitude. We lay aside our fears and pray for courage. We lay aside our divisions and pray for unity. Lord, we lay aside all that separates us from you. Amen. The prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Glory be to God in the world around us, in sun and shade, day and night, and in the rhythm of the seasons. Glory be to God in the communities in which we live, in love and laughter, sorrow and joy, and the patterns of human living. Glory be to God in the way we live our lives, in giving and sharing, thanking and knowing, and all that makes us Jesus' disciples. Glory be to God in the global village, in places far and near, in the search for justice and peace, and all that makes us one human family. Glory be to God in the smallest of things, tiny creatures, fleeting moments, the smallest speck of faith still growing. Glory be to God in greatness and majesty, tallest mountains, the highest clouds, the awesome dance of the whole cosmos. Amen. We bring before God our concerns for our world. Where there is war, we pray for peace. Where there is sickness, we pray for health. Where there is despair, we pray for hope. Lord, guide our activity as part of the church. May we find ways to grow, may we always honour you, may we serve our communities. 
We hold in your love those whom we love, those who are sick, those who are sorrowful, those who need guidance and direction. Come to us, God of glory. Hear us, heal us, and shine through our lives. In the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of our salvation, you have ordained that we should serve you in serving one another. Look upon this nation and the nations of the world, burdened at this time with many cares and anxieties, with infection, sickness, and untimely death. Grant us grace to work together with honest and faithful hearts, each caring for the good of all, that striving first for your kingdom and its righteousness, we may have added to us all things that we need for our daily sustenance and the common good. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, the hour has come to let go of all that weighs us down and to praise you for new beginnings. The hour has come to lay aside differences and to praise you for new friendships. The hour has come to let go of all that holds us back and to praise you for new opportunities. The hour has come to be confident in our faith and to praise you for the ministry to which you have entrusted to us. The hour has come to live as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and graciously gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good deed and word. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen.